the Southern Hemisphere has uh, struck back in a big way. So given that the next World Cup is in 2027, it's not even a Southern Hemisphere thing, Jerry. We'll be one year shy of a quarter of a century at the next World Cup where it's been uh, not New Zealand or South Africa winning the World Cup. Those two for basically 25 years of World Cup. Yeah, wow. When you look at it like that, it, and it, there's a certain sameness about it. And it's, it's a little bit disappointing that it has come down to this because it's probably been the best, best French team in any World Cup cycle. And it's a, a World Cup in France. So if they weren't going to make a final this time, you wonder when they ever will. And of course, we all know that it was the best Irish team that's ever competed in the World Cup. And allowing for the ridiculously tough draw for both of them, you'd have to think if Ireland weren't going to make a final this time around, when are they ever going to do it? And so we've ended up with the two superpowers, each of them three-time winners, one of them going to be top dog with the fourth uh, William Webb Ellis trophy in their in their collection. Um, but come, come kick off, it will be a great game for sure. And uh, as Rod said, I was lucky enough, we all were to be at that semi-final in 2015. That was a great All Blacks team, probably the greatest of all time, with legends of the game like Dan Card and Richie McCaw and Man Nano and so forth. And a young Bowden Barrett just for impact. God almighty, when you think of it. And Sonny Bill Williams for impact. Um, and this team isn't as good, yet finds itself in the final with a very, very good chance because they really haven't had much stress in getting here. Apart from that one outstanding effort, particularly defensively, they counted their tackle count at something around 276. Scott McLeod did the defensive coach, a hundred of them in the last quarter alone. They probably haven't put in such a defensive shift in the last four years under Ian Foster. And they, apart from that, they breezed through to the final, scoring a hat load of tries. They scored 48 tries. I mean, South Africa have only scored 27. Um, and they breezed into the final. They got Will Jordan within one of a record. I think they've got more tries in them. They've got more strike moves in them. They've got more rugby in them. And they're definitely fresher. And they have a day more to prepare for this final. Admittedly, the All Blacks at eight days and, and the Springboks seven. So not like four years ago when the Springboks overcame a six-day turnaround. Um, but they must be, not least Bungie Manambi playing 80 minutes every game. They must be running on a little bit emptier than the All Blacks are. And I just think it's, it's it, w- it would have seemed unthinkable watching the Twickenham warm-up game on the last Friday before the World Cup started yeah. and what the what the Springboks did to the All Blacks just blitzing that the All Blacks could be have every have a 50-50 beating the box in the final. But I think they do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I was just thinking, Rory. Now, look, I could be totally wrong here, and maybe in New Zealand and South Africa they talk about the Boer War and all these other things that I'm not au fait with. But unlike, say, the Six Nations, where when Ireland play England, there is a historical and a political uh, weight to that fixture. I, I do feel that New Zealand and South Africa is just a rugby rivalry when they come together. That's my sense of it from afar, and there's a great richness to that rugby rivalry 105 matches so 46 in New Zealand 52 in South Africa 7 at neutral venues of the 105 New Zealand are out in front on 62 South Africa on 39 4 draws in there and of the 7 on a neutral venue New Zealand are just 4-3 ahead so the, 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 I mean this, this kind of is the rugby rivalry in, in many respects as much as we might like to take a northern hemisphere slant yeah, sure. I mean, England, like in a different era, England and Australia would have been a great rugby rivalry, but right now, you know, they're both at low ebbs. But I think South Africa are the one team New Zealand see as equals and uh, vice versa. Um, I would say of the vast percentage, you know, if you were to actually do a chart of when those games took place, the vast majority of them were in, are in the last 20 years since the game went professional and they, be, they, they became bedfellows and played in the rugby championship. So they play each other a lot. They play... You know, there have been a few tankings over the last couple of years, particularly when South Africa were, were at a in a dark enough place. But they're generally pretty tight games. But those tours, I think there is a lot of lore. If you, you know, in, in South Africa and New Zealand rugby about the tours they used to go on to each other's countries, and Sean Fitzpatrick talks about winning a, a series down there as as probably the high point of his career, mm. and he won a World Cup. You know, there's the footage of him pounding the ground after winning a, a third. The, I can't remember exactly it was the second or third test but to win a, a series in South Africa as a New Zealander of his era was the ultimate yeah, the ultimate thing to do so there is I think within the two countries a huge amount of history and respect but yeah it's I mean they're in different continents they're yeah. not really you know they're, they're, they don't come across each other in any other walk of life really I would, I would say maybe in rowing or swimming or something but like it's not like they have you know it's it's a long haul flight to get from one to the other. It's not like Ireland and England where there's so much cross pollination. Yeah, um, and they're both quite isolated. You know, they're yes. both, it's the it's the 
so football is more popular in in South Africa than 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 uh, rugby, but rugby is kind of the national game in the fact that the Springboks are so important to the whole of society. Even though more people may play f- football, rugby is so central to what they do. And in New Zealand, again, other sports are becoming more popular, but the All Blacks, you know, they are nationally symbolic and, and emblematic of the of the country. So they're, they're, that's unique to those two countries as well. Really, Wales maybe is the only other country where mm. rugby is so central to their identity. So there's a few things going on, but yeah, I think they respect each other at the core. I think that they see each other as their as each other's rivals, and that's it's hard to get each other's attention, you know.